here, aka Peter Freak Out Tune, bringing you guys an episode of Video Game Time. The good games are always reviewed. Okay, back into our video game review. Say, have you guys ever wanted to be a god? Well, too bad, because the real world is not going to make that wish come true. Because it's the harshest environment ever. You sad now? Sorry, but that's the way it works. But that's why we have video games. So all that sadness can go away. But have you ever wondered what one must go through to become a god? And what steps they must take to fulfill the respect of other gods? While also feeling the strength of those gods in one's body? Well, that's where today's game comes in. And what game is that, you may be asking? That game is none other than God of War. Heck yes. Now, God of War, this is a game made back in 2005, and it was developed by Santa Monica Studios. Now, this is the company who did games such as Kinetica. They also did War of the Monsters, which I thought was an awesome game. Game I liked War of the Monsters. I thought that was a really good game. Domination, um... And this was released as a PlayStation 2 exclusive, so you're not going to get this on the Xbox or GameCube, so you're going to get this just on the PlayStation 2. But this game actually started production way back in 2002 um, under the title Dark Odyssey, where David Jaffe, the game's director, wanted to start work on a game that touched upon Greek mythology while also using the creative freedom the company had to modify the myths, which he describes as the most interesting part of this game, and he decided to incorporate them into the story. David cites many materials as inspiration for the story, such as the 1981 film Clash of the Titans. He also admitted in an interview that he owed a lot to Ami Musha, which, in his words, he said, let's do that only with gods. He also cited three huge influences for getting this game in to the gameplay stage that it was, um, that being Devil May Cry, which he, he wanted for its fast-paced action, which helped contribute to the game's addicting, fast gameplay that they had, 2001's Eco or Ico for its puzzle-solving, as well as The Prince of Persia for its platforming. And the game was later showed off at E3 2004, where... David revealed that the game would have a, more of a cinematic feel to it, which was seen through the cameras. The players at E3 felt the cameras were the biggest problem with the game, but had confidence the problems in the game would be fixed around the time of its release. With that being said, he also made it clear, even though it was being fixed and that they were being corrected, um, nothing they will do will make you love the game more or less because the system would remain the same, but fixed a little bit from where it was originally. After many months of work, the team finally finished up the game. The game was released on March 2005 from how it seems. It seems to have sold a lot of copies, but we'll get more on the final results later. Really doesn't seem to be any sort of word on how much it sold at the moment, but... Yeah, but I guess it would sell, sell a lot because the game actually received a lot of critical acclaim for its compelling story, addicting gameplay, and its graphics. Positive reviews came from Tom Lane of CNN, who are the last people I ever thought would review a video game, said, God of War is the type of game that reminds you why you play games in the first place, praising the game for its addictive gameplay, unique puzzles, while also calling the game the most violent game ever made. GameSpot awarded the game, another another review site where reference, uh, a 9.3 out of 10, calling it one of the best action-adventure games on the PlayStation 2, should not be missed. Um, IGN, another site, awarded the game a 9.8 out of 10, who finished their review urging viewers or readers to buy the game and beat it, seeing as how they just talk, just talking about it wouldn't be enough to get people to play the game. And there wasn't that many sites that gave the game bad reviews, which actually kind of surprised me. But they did have some common complaints, which were seen in some of the reviews, like the camera system and some of the puzzles weren't that good. But the game received a lot of acclaim, and right off the bat, I'm just going to say it, I see why. This game is 
awesome. It is a hell of a lot of fun. And I was already anticipating on playing this game for the past year, and it did not disappoint. So much so that I did an entire blog talking about why I'm excited to play the game this year back in January. It fulfilled my expectations that I had for this game. So much so that I go as far to say this is one of the most beautifully epic games I think I've ever played since Star Fox Adventures. And that game was awesome. This would be second to that or... First, I have a hard time deciding. There's beauty beyond the graphics and gameplay, but also in the story following a scarred warrior who's looking for redemption and vengeance. That warrior is named Kratos, who you play as, um, um, who is a Spartan warrior, who was the leader of this Spartan army who took down every enemy that he's come across, but his trouble started when, during one of the battles, he's about to be killed, so he calls upon Ares, the god of war, to save him. Ares comes and saves him, but makes a bargain that if he gives him the tools to save his own life, he will serve him. He agrees, and he gives him these chain blades, which from then on, he uses to take down his enemies. And since then, he's been under the command of Ares, and and the other gods who send them to this village where he slaughters them all, but what he doesn't know is that his wife and child are there hiding out, and he accidentally kills them. There he's cursed by an oracle of the village, and who puts this... who covers him with the ashes of his dead wife and kid, which makes his skin white. Um, right there, bit him. Some of the images and some of the images aren't the best here, so I'm just gonna try to see if I can find a picture. I really don't see say, but his skin is white. He has like these paint red stuff around him. Um, he also has visions of the horrible deeds that he gets night and day. And now it's ten years later, and since then, Kratos has been serving the gods as a chance for forgiveness from them. And since then, he's been drinking, having sex, taking down his enemies in really bloody anger. And he takes his complaints to Athena, who tells him, if you want to get rid of all this, you have to go back to Athens and kill Ares, a.k.a. the god of war. So he agrees, and now Kratos is, is on this journey to bring down the god of war and rid his head of the visions. Will Kratos be able to bring down the god of war and rid his head of the visions, or will the god of war, war beat down Kratos and bring him into the underworld? But God of War is one of those games that, be, that should be described as much more than just a game. Because it's a product that is the equivalent of a work of art. The team at Santa Monica's understand that in order to bring a world to life, there needs to be a story to the characters. Because if there isn't a story to the characters, then the world would feel empty. And just because you can make all these realistic graphics doesn't mean that you've created a world. It's always the story that must come first. And this game creates a story that draws you into the world. Start with this whole feel of like mixing like the whole mixing the feel of this vengeance story and really it putting in these stories of the gods and like how they pretty much torment this guy who's pretty much trying to serve them then and pretty much much because he served them and never thought to basically look upon look upon himself he's per and care about others because he's been serving them for so long and like it thinks because they're gods like they're right about everything thing that pretty much like he needs to do everything they say without thinking and I like that whole feel that it's about him trying to get vet trying to get redemption among them Kratos is a character with layers that has real depth to him. And while you can see what he's doing, you kind of get the idea that he doesn't know what he's doing wrong, and it's causing him more harm than good. At times watching this, there's a lot of multiple reasons that I kind of got why he is the way he was, he is at the beginning. 
You could say he's probably power hungry and wants to show he has honor to give to the gods. So the character starts off with more than just one reason. So he's not a one reason character. And I like the depth that Santa Monica wanted to, went to develop the character and create this character with such complexity that it rivals stories about godlike figures. That I swore I was reading a book I, about a real life figure looking to become a god. Because when we were in high school, we would read God. We were in like this class, this English class, where we talked about gods and whatnot. And this kind of, and this reminded me a lot of those because there's such complexity to the nature of the stories, from their origin to like their driving point to why they're they're out to take down their enemies and their final moments of the story. And Santa Monica, I think, understood that with the stories about godly-like figures, there was this sort of complexity to them. Like, when you look at a painting at church, you see this uh, high presence that you think of, how did they become this high and mighty that the painting makes them out to be? I feel Santa Monica wanted to create a character that had that same strength of a god in those pictures while also showing his journey to become the god he becomes in the end. And it really draws you into the world that they're looking to create. Um, so the story itself was really well done. I like the, the inclusion of other gods that they, took, that they took creative liberties with. There's They're nothing big. They're just little tiny liberties that you notice. So if you get easily offended by the changes, just don't worry. They're not too big. Um, but other than that, they still remain true, and I like how they contribute to the story, giving you the power-up, so you'll get various power-ups that relate to a specific god. I'll talk about what they are later, because I want to save that for the gameplay. But you kind of guess what you are, what they are if you're an expert on gods and whatnot. But overall, I thought the story was great and really smart with the complex angle they went with on the gods. In terms of graphics... Fix. Moving on to the graphics, the graphics in this game look fantastic. This is such a beautiful game. From the start, when you see the sights of the landscapes of, of Athens that you encounter in this game, every single area has this deadly beauty to it. Each of the areas, like the first level on the ship that I mentioned, where you fight the... Where you fight in Athens, or the first level on the boat where you fight the Hydra, and just the detail on the ship with the black on the rotting wood to the minute you step into Athens and the buildings you visit in the area, and just the length of them with the color on each of them and the light that comes through the windows on some of them, it looks like actual light is coming through the windows. You'll see detail like that in every single area. And the character models also look fantastic. Kratos carries a, in a, carries a fantastic amount of details in cutscenes, and during gameplay, it makes him look like a living, breathing person. Everything, with the muscle on the body, to the lip syncing, to the movement on him, the model on him looks amazing. The other character models look great as well. Each of them carry the same amount of detail found on Kratos. But besides the humans, the enemies you fight are great. They have great such detail, and they're really unique looking, and have and have really unique designs to them. Some of which kind of harken back to what I mentioned earlier with the paintings. There's like a Cerberus dog. Um, there's which kind of like go. What I was trying to say is like they kind of are taken from like real life mythology some of these creatures like like the sirens there's the cyclops that you'll fight there's the gorgons which like the snakehead lady of medusa uh, so there's a lot that so the enemies in the game really are taken from real life mythologies and carry a lot of detail to them and i think they look really really good and at times, like the woman that you do fight, like the Gorgons, they're really provocative because some of them are a couple new. So a couple of them are nude and they have their tits hanging out. But it's fitting for the time period. But you'll fight various monsters, demons, men, and and the enemy variety is very unlimited. So you'll never feel like you're fighting the same enemy over and over again. And the cutscenes themselves look great, carrying the same type of detail that was present in the gameplay. And the cutscenes are also present, but with great voice acting. 
interesting. Granted, the characters who be who are being who are being voiced aren't in the game too much, other than Kratos and the animator, who are like the two biggest parts of the game. Uh, Kratos, uh, voiced by T.C. Carson, who I didn't even know was in uh, Final Destination 2. Uh, for those who don't know, Final Destination 2, he was the black dude who tried to shoot himself, but he couldn't because his time didn't come. He does a great job, though, giving Kratos... I gotta review Final Destination sometime um, in preparation for the third one, which I plan to see. Uh, but uh, he does a great job giving Kratos this angry, regretful personality to the character, and it really fits him perfectly from the opening where he's like, The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. Now there is no hope. He does a great job. But another voice who has a lot of screen time is the narrator, who's actually voiced by Linda Hunt, who you guys might remember from Pocahontas, she was in The Relic, Kindergarten Cops, Silverado, who I thought was perfect for the voice of the narrator. Her voice really comes off as a deep, soothing, and yet poetic feel that really keeps you engaged in what's going on. And on top of all that, the score that accompanies these voices is fantastic. I really pictured this type of orchestra it, with this game, but I never expected it to be this good. Each area you visit has its own orchestra that accompanies the settings. And the orchestra is the equivalent of something you would find in something like Gladiator or even Clash of the Titans, like I mentioned. It's that same sort of epic buildup in the score that makes you feel heroic and at times a fighter. There were many people who did worked on the score. Each of them, I think, have their own style that contribute to the locations of the game. And each of them fit the colors and mood of the environment. I like the underworld level. The first level that I mentioned earlier with the boat. It's just an epic score that... Even as I turn the game off, it still remains in my head. <laughs> so the technical aspect to this game is great. But of course, technicality is not enough to recommend this game unless we look at the most needed aspect for any game out there, the gameplay. Basically, the game is a lot is a hack and slash, much like Devil May Cry, where you basically go through the environment and, and kill various enemies with weapons and, and, and various budding mashing combos. Basically, in the game, you start off equipped with the blades that you find Ares gave you, and you can do various combos, like you could spin enemies around in this wave style and go to town on them. At some point, we could throw them up in the air and grab them and spin them around and punch them and whatnot. Uh, there's some option, there's some points where you could grab random enemies while they're on the ground and just rip them apart. So this game doesn't shy away from the blood. It's definitely a bloody game. Probably say this is one of the most violent games I've played in a played. Uh, probably up there with Manhunt, I should say. But, um, um, there's some big enemies that you'll fight, like, and once you beat them down to the point while they're in a daze, you'll see the circle button appear over their head, if, and if you push it in time, you'll perform a quick time event on them. And when, when you get the quick time events right, you'll kill them in a very gory way. Like, you could, like, he'll jump on the back of them and go down and stab them across the chest. Um, and it must, and yeah, this is definitely a, a very gory game. People get cut in half. People get ripped apart. They have their heads pulled off. It's definitely not for kids. In fact, to prove how much further this game isn't for kids, there is actually a part in this game where basically you go into like, where you're on the ship, there's two, these two naked women who are sleeping with you. And you can have, and you can have sex with them in this sort of mini game, which... I thought that was a little strange, but it was definitely funny, though. Definitely funny. Um, at times, as I mentioned, there's there's also some platforming you can do, um, where basically there's some points where you have to walk along this beam at time, these beams at times without falling. Uh, so there's platforming like that. Um, there's some puzzles you have to solve, and the puzzles in this game are definitely really hard. There's definitely some really challenging puzzles that you'll have to solve. But for the most part, I think they're really well done. Definitely keep you, keep you thinking a lot. So there's definitely a lot to this game. And of course, the boss battles are definitely a lot of fun. There's some quick time events to some of them, but for most of the time, but for most of the time, I think you can get a handle on them. And each time you fight an enemy in this game, one of the most unique parts is that when you fight an enemy, you'll have points where basically... Um, 
where basically when you kill them or you perform a combo on them, basically you'll get points which you can use to basically like upgrade yourself. You can upgrade the weapons that you have to unlock more combos. You can do more damage to your enemies. So there's a lot to the combos. There's They're not limited and definitely a lot of fun uh, to use. Um, there's also some points in the game where basically like when you're fighting an enemy, the combat in this game, it must be said, the combat is definitely very forgiving. So it's not like Devil May Cry where you're graded on at the end. So don't get upset if you screw up a combo. It's definitely a lot more easier to do more so than Devil May Cry because compared to Devil May Cry, which is tough... Uh, which is a lot more tougher and less forgiving because if you get hit once, that's going to count towards your combo being ruined. This, however, is more like um, um, if you get hit, don't worry, you'll just move on because it's more story, it's more story based and less arcadey, like Devil May Cry. So yeah, this is definitely a fun game that really offers up a lot, and I dare say it's one of the best hack and slashes on the PS2. Do I have some problems with it? Yes, no game is perfect. For one thing, um, I do feel the game is a little bit too short because I kind of feel like when I was playing it, it went by a little too fast. And I'm sort of like, that's it? That's all that happens? And it just felt a little too, went by a little too fast. I'm not sure how long it was to beat. But overall, I definitely think that it offered for what little it had. Um, another problem that I did have is that I don't know if it's my PS2 or something, but when I played this game, it's like, it's not even that scratched. But when I played this on my PS2, like, there's points when it would stutter during the game. Uh, I don't know if it's the laser, because I've read, like, stuff, people saying, like, oh, my old PS2, it stutters during the game because the laser is not powerful or something. I don't know, but that I found really annoying, uh... And I was almost going to buy a new copy, but I was actually sort of like after reading that, I was like, you know what, never mind. I'll just stick with this and just beat it and play it. But besides those two, God of War is a phenomenally, is a phenomenal written story about a Greek god looking to become something and look for the greatest treasure of all. And that is his, his rise to power. So... If you are into hack and slash, if you like Devil May Cry, I highly recommend you check out God of War. It's a fantastic game. I hope they can do more with this series, and I can't wait to check them out in the future. But, yeah, definitely check out God of War. So, overall, I give God of War a 9.8 out of 10, and it deserves it. Therefore, it gets my seal of approval. Definitely a game you ought to check out if you're a fan of hack and slashes if you're a fan of greek mythology you will love this game but yeah definitely a great game but that's my review for god of war and next time i'm going to do a review on the toolbox merge you guys will get my thoughts on that later and then i'm going to do a review on doom 3 resurrection of evil you guys will get my thoughts on that expansion and then i'm going to do a review of hostage so i'll give my thoughts on that film but all that aside, I'll see you guys later. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of God of War. Do you guys like the game? Do you guys hate it? What is your favorite hack and slash? Tell me in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.